This is our final series for the third stream here of day number two at the International 2017 Group Stage Execration versus Invictus Gaming. Invictus Gaming, they've had an all right group stage so far. I believe their score is three and three. Execration, a little bit rougher for them, but if they can pull at least one win against Invictus Gaming, it would be a huge windfall for, again, keeping them away from that lower part of the group stage, while IG, they're searching for a 2-0 for sure because they want to be able to get in that top four area, especially with some tough opponents still ahead. Going to our first draft, we're going to go for our first pick, Nyx Assassin, after what was a very long wait for Execration's second ban. They took a while, but they finally went for the Death Prophet, and it seems like they're still biting into their reserve time here on their second pick. Went for the Sand King, but now awaiting its pair. Yeah, the Death Prophet first too is a bit interesting. I know a lot of teams have been banning that hero in the third and fourth phase, mm -hmm. once you have your opener. But I guess if you're going to first phase DK, it makes a little bit more sense. It's not really the, the most enjoyable hero to lane against his melee. Spirit Siphon is pretty strong, got good wave clear, pretty decent base damage. So I guess in that sense, it's it definitely kind of fits the bill for the, the Sand King DK opening. IG, on the other hand, Picking up a Nyx Assassin, it's a really solid hero. I know that they have at least two Nyx Assassin players. Uh, if they ever wanted to run in the offlane position, you don't see it that much anymore. But yeah. it's more of a four roll than anything else. Walk to a lane with your crazy level one regen and a stout shield and poke people. Pretty good. I think Tomes really widened the support pool for the four position quite a lot just yeah. because... Like, a lot of these heroes, Clockwork, Nyx, Assassin, that were traditionally run in the off lane, now kind of get their guaranteed level 6 by minute 10. If you're not with that tome, if you aren't level 6, you probably have done something wrong. Probably ended up a little bit behind somehow. Yeah, it's very true. Especially since a lot of the, like, position 4 heroes, some of them can be ult-reliant. Like, Nyx, I'd say, definitely fits that bill. Just, I need level 6 so I can really influence the map and, and make something happen for my team, but AA second pick. Obviously a good choice against the DK, hero who naturally has a lot of armor. Uh, will eventually build into BKB later on into the game, of course, but early on it's nice to be able to deter him from pushing towers. You also have things like Chilling Touch, which can be really good for just killing naturally high armor heroes in general. So yeah. it's a solid choice, I feel. Is there still plenty of mids that can counter the Dragonite? Like, it felt like Execration took so long about that second pick, Dragonite. Even though they banned the Death Prophet, and it seemed like they were probably already had it in their mind. I think they were kind of talking about themselves, like, do we really want to first phase a Dragonite? I think it's a hero that's very hard to directly lane counter, unless you're picking, like, a Razor. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking Razor, Viper, even just uh, a Queen of Pain would have been okay uh, as a second pick, in my mind, for IG. It's interesting because DK doesn't struggle as much against Queen and Viper as you would think, yeah. as long as you're hitting your Breathe Fire. If you miss your Breathe Fire, then yeah, you're going to you're gonna have a bit of a hard time. <laughs> but if you walk to lane with some pool to regen and you have a, a poor man's shield, the 102 build at level 3, you can pretty much regen through Shadow Strike. <laughs> and unless the Viper is dumping his entire mana pool into orb walking you, which a lot of the time just won't happen because the creep, is, creep wave is going to get pulled around by you, yeah. then... You know, it's not so bad, but it also means that you have to pick a Viper, and that hero oh. is... Have we seen a Viper this tournament yet? I have a feeling we haven't. I haven't personally. I think the hero is actually a lot stronger than he used to be, though. Talents made him a lot better at what he wants to do, which is just be like that frontline, unkillable siege hero. Yeah. So I think that the hero has some merit. It's just really boring. Like, yeah. I think uh, both Viper and Razor got... Like with the town pool gave a little bit more longevity to their their like peak. Yeah. You know, they, they scale a little bit better than they used to. The Shadow, Shadow. Demon is really strange. The they only... gotta go for all in push strat? I think the only thing that you can justify that by is saying that they're gonna pick some like Luna or T B or yeah. you know, some hero that's going to make that hero make sense. Yeah. Because right now it it with what they have, sure you can you know, disrupt somebody into a Sand King stun, but this is not really the meta where you see two supports just walking around in the early parts of the game looking for kills anymore. It just doesn't really happen. So... Yeah, absolutely. A lot more of the time we see one support putting pressure on mid, and then the other support is either 
keeping the offlaner out, or maybe they do uh, some sort of aggro dual offlane or something like that. There is some cool uh, idea of the Shadow Demon, though, and, and this is a little bit long-winded, but if you have a Shadow Demon and you know that there's only one ban phase left, you can wait a little bit. Okay, yeah, they're just going to pick the Lunar right away. But I was going to say, you can wait because you already have your DK, and you know that's going to be your mid hero. Mm -hmm. So you can wait and see what IG pick before you you take your core, but since they just took the Luna now, that means that they're what? They're gonna last pick off lane Raging Potatoes likely. Hero? Yeah. So I guess he is drafting, you know? Some drafters <laughs> really like, they really like last picking their Hero Cap. Come yeah. on. It ha Puppy does that. He, he does that quite a bit. For considering the fact that it's a support, you know? Right, right. And I think a lot of the time it works for them, but there are some, some captains out there who are just like, I'm gonna last pick, you know? Yeah. Ultimately, I, I think the, the offlaner, uh, I, I've heard this from a, a couple of different pros. If you can, you want to pick your offlaner after the safe lane hero yes. is picked, right? Yes. It just adds, because so many times, if you pick your offlaner up, they're going to pick supports that are going to end up roaming around. They're going to pick up one on one matchup that is terrible for you as an offlaner. And you're going to be forced into a 1v1 where you feel like you need to accomplish a lot. But you just won't be able to because of the matchup. You're going to pick like your Nyx Assassin or something, and they're going to pick Life Stealer, yeah, or they're exactly. going to pick Juggernaut, and you're just going to be like, can I leave now? Yeah. Can I just, I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah, I feel that pain. So right. Raging Potatoes, he's not going to feel this this pain, right? Because they do have last pick last. Yes. Tinker for Invictus Gaming, the old OP Tinker. This is actually an incredible Tinker game. It's pretty sick. There is zero catch. And Tinker is interesting because he's not a hero where you can say just having a blink stun is enough. Because it's not. You need a vision hero. Yeah. You need something that's going to be able to, to find him in order to get the kill. So now the concern is, what do you go back for? Like, if you're going to pick something in the offlane capacity, what hero can scout Tinker? Like, Zeus is the only thing that comes to mind. What about a Beastmaster? Oh yeah, Beastmaster is always there. Why do I always forget about him? Yeah, it doesn't get picked up very often. It's like, I think, it, I think it's hard to run because it's kind of slow. And you have to enable that hero a lot. It kind of fits with the Luna though. The the double aura thing, you know, what they want to do, they want to push. Yeah, double aura. Plus the fact that I think Luna and Dragonite draw a lot of attention to themselves. Um, Luna can be pretty active when you have Eclipse up. Yeah, yeah. All those sort of things kind of get because the Beastmaster just really can't do anything. He wants to do his laning phase things, and maybe you can go gank into him, but he's not really wanting to move around and make things happen. He wants to just farm and farm until he gets, like, uh, depending on the build, sometimes Necronomicon, sometimes we've seen, like, Liquid Mind Control go for some pretty interesting, like, right-click builds on the Beastmaster involving, like, Vlads. Yeah. But you need that basic set of items to really become a good Beastmaster. Uh, what else? They're uh, well. They banned Bat, which would have been okay, but it's yeah. It's against Shaker Nix. I wouldn't even like want to play Bat in this game. You know, it's it's really tricky to try to to oh. try to get that pick off. And it's gonna be a tough one on one matchup, but it's an instant pick up of an Omni Knight. So apparently they're ignoring the play of like going and shutting down the Tinker. They're all in on pushing for the high ground. Is what the hell is Luna riding? That is a sea monster of sorts. I don't know what you call that. Maybe some kind of sea dragon? It's a Myrmidon. It has to be from the... Like the Compendium, right? Yeah, yeah. It has to be yeah, one of the Compendium sets. Yeah. That is definitely some sort of water monster. That's why I don't the go into the, the ocean. ocean cap. Oh, me neither, dude! That's why. <laughs> we share another link! You don't know what's down there. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting. If I go into the water... And I was like attacked by the sh uh, like a shark or something. I'd make the same noise as if like seaweed touches my feet. I would just scream. <laughs> Someone was asked like, "What's wrong?" Icky toes. <laughs> Icky toes. It's not good. Dude. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> yeah, but th that's uh, <laughs> that's my nightmare right there, Cap. It's okay. I'm uh, not playing the game, so I don't have to worry about it. And that is true. You won't have to worry about it at all. You'll just have to watch it all unfold. Maybe it'll give you some nightmares tonight. Burning last pick, Lone Druid. 
with the Tinker. It does feel like the lineup is pretty slow from IG. I, I can actually see this push lineup, despite it facing into an Earthshaker, Sand King, Tinker, and Ancient Apparition. I could see them actually hitting their timings and, and winning. I, I, I'm inclined to agree with that. But my philosophy behind IG's that, again, very independent laners, all of them. Yeah. They have a Tinker in a 1v1 who is fantastic. They have a Lone Druid in a 1v1, very hard to pressure. And like, what do you... So when you think that they have the opening, what are you hoping for? Are you just thinking the lanes go even, that's enough for them to kind of group up and do what they want? Because they're going to have to play very fast. They really are, especially since Execreation, or sorry, uh, IG, Victus Gaming, they, they can set up and defend pushes very well. So they can slow you down a lot. Not just with March of the Machines, but Fisher as well. So they have to go even the laning pace. Then they have to move pretty fast. I think they, they have to get some smoke ganks that are super successful. Right? They managed to get the, the successful pick off of the core, turn it into a fast push on the tower, uh, maybe just keep on going, force defensive rotations, somehow open up Roshan for you as well. Because I think... I think a relatively early Roshan is pretty important here because I think second Roshan is going to be very key for them to successfully go high ground. Second Roshan is going to be hard on its own. Yeah, it is. Just because by then you have to imagine they're going to have Ice Blast, they're going to have Tinker March. Blink or Shaker Echo. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky. I think that IG are the type of team where as long as they don't get completely obliterated in the lanes, this type of lineup... Oh man, I just like pushing into that is like PTSD. Yeah. But we'll you, see I, I, I'm thinking like 60 40 to the favor of IG. For okay. It's not just but the draft, number, a little bit of it is the fact that IG, I think, are, are a bit better of the team. That number changes a lot as the time goes on, though. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, it comes down to our laning phase quite a bit. It's the aggro trying to come out from Execration. He's going to be dodged. We've got to move uh, Invictus. Tri lane into the bottom lane, or I should really say dual lane. This is just Q and Burning facing up against the Omni Knight. Bobica kind of hamming around this mid lane. It's going to try and wrap onto James, get a stun, get some free damage onto the Dragonite for OP. Now, this matchup is probably Tinker favored regardless, just because he's Tinker against melee. Laser is real good. Pure damage against the DK. This is probably one of the heroes that can beat DK the hardest, I feel, besides like Razor and stuff. Yeah. Disruption. They do have a lot of damage. Ooh, nice body block there. RR gets a successful surround there between his two Lucians and his hero. A lot of damage onto XXS. Nightwish. Can I call him Nightwish for the rest of the cast? That's a much cooler name. I mean, success. you can do whatever you want. Nightwish. I'm sure Cinderin's out there somewhere smiling. I'm going to say it in that in voice lane? every single time. James is dead. Holy cow. The uh, hell is this dive? RR, are you going to be able to do much here, buddy? I don't think so. You're a shadow demon. Disruption ain't really a thing. I like the intonation of you just saying he was a shadow demon. Yeah. That, that, well, that's what you get for picking shadow demons. Oh, oh, oh. Get in position for the lock. Get him. Get body block him. Bobaka is does not care. That's how you know you're you're like a weak ass support hero by yourself. When I'm telling body block him, like that's your sick play. Successfully I mean, like, body block. You're like a Rubik basically level one. Yeah. You just don't really offer a whole lot. You're just mostly a setup for other people, but uh, here they're not really playing the Shadow Demon SK around each other too much. Uh, Saint King's being chilling out in this bottom lane. Trying to, I guess, counter what Q brings to lane with the Lone Druid. So I think uh, an Omni Knight can do okay against the Lone Druid in a one on one matchup just because he has a pretty good time in the first couple levels. Depends on how fast it gets to his Soul Ring. If yeah. he doesn't have the Soul Ring by the time the Lone Druid hits uh, like level 3 to 5, it can get a little bit. Uh, uh, be a struggle. Yeah. Because you can't heal yourself fast enough, you can't sustain the lane. He's actually going to go for boots first, so he's probably feeling like he'll be able to get there. No real. Problem it though. There is a problem. Another dive. James gonna be caught. Oh, that's a burrow shank. That's complete with Lumic. Come on, baby. James is having a hard enough time if you missing burrow strikes like that. Yeah, it's ticker pick is gonna come in huge, I feel this game. And it's already kind of at that point where you know the laning phase is gonna last a couple more minutes, but they're all going well 
I would say, except for maybe top uh, for IG, and, and that's expected. You know, XXS is up here against a dual lane. It's not really going to be something he's going to excel at, but OP is going to create so much space during the mid game for him to be able to get whatever item he needs. Yeah. So if he has to suffer for the first, you know, 10 minutes or whatever. Eight and three compared to Lone Druid's 13 and 10. XXS, Nightwish, has 10 and one, so he's doing pretty well for uh, an Earth Shaker facing up against Shattered Demon Luna. It's a lot of damage. And the occasional Sand King, as you could see him hiding in the trees, hoping to be able to get Execration, their first kill. They have apparently abandoned James in mid lane. I thought they would be rotating Shattered Demon Sand King into mid all day long, but. If they do that, they're forcing 1v1s in both other lanes. And honestly, Earthshaker against Luna, Shaker probably does fine in a 1v1. And then bottom lane, Burning is gonna win that. So if you're if you're sending two supports mid to deal with the Tinker, you might not even kill him. That's the other thing. Because one support does zero damage, and then you have one stun because James hasn't skilled up Dragon Tail. And that's it. It's like, are you guaranteeing the kill by going mid? You're pretty much just trying to help James get a handful of CS. So it looks like the best thing they could do is just take this safe lane tower as fast as humanly possible. Because James is going to die again. He has to somehow dodge the stun, but he slowed down, so it's not going to happen. Stun lands, cold feet would have procced, but it's not even needed. Meanwhile, top lane, they do manage to get the dive onto XXS. Take him down and get some more damage. Look at him, they're just like, they're even pulling the creep wave over. They're doing everything they can to take this tower as fast as humanly possible, because they got to break down this laning phase. Yeah, getting the tower down, freeing out the supports to be able to do something else, it's, it's very integral for what their lineup needs to do. The unfortunate part of this game is like OP having a killing spree already. Like he's all of his team's kills right now. So he's going to get to the soul running, he's going to get to the bots, he's going to get out of control. And it's about the vision game and being able to catch him that's going to become a really big issue for Execration because if they cannot 5-man, then they, they're just not going to be able to, to really pressure the map. You know, you have to walk up with your Luna and your Omni Knight and your DK in open form and feel confident in hitting that building. And if OP has had this good of a start and no one's going to slow him down, doing that five-man Dota against Tinker doesn't feel so good. No, it certainly doesn't. Pushes are going to be slowed down. The side lanes are going to be pushed in. Oh, Raging Potato has now reached the hard part of the lane. It's uh, Lone Druid tanked. level five. Yep. That's a, that's a hard lane. I mean, if they, if they wanted to force like these 1v1s, they could have potentially picked something else that matches up better in the 1v1 against the Lone Druid, but the hero, I think they wanted something with sustain because they were playing against the Tinker. Like, even in that case, like, you could have just picked, like, Jug or something, right? Like, Healing Ward's great against the Tinker. Sick him, Raging Potato! You got him. Forced the Shrine usage and still got the kill. Value. Somewhere, Sir Action Slacks is smiling while he clicks all of his abilities and builds really bad items. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jake. Like, what are you doing with boots? Raindrop? Does that item just go away after a while? Isn't that just lost gold? Yeah, every time I watch Jake play Dota, I question everything that I know about the game. I think everyone does. <laughs> I, think I think everyone questions the MMR system. Oh, Q. Q dud. XXS might be dead as well. What'd you just TP into, my friend? It's a world of hurt awaiting for you, unless they can get the Fisher stun, combo onto Nando, and run. Run, 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 run. Caustic Finale slows down uh, XXS, though, and he will still die. So maybe Bulbacus gonna die as well. He throws himself in the trees. Let's just finish off this tier one tower casually, and then go for the dive behind the tower. So Bulbacus is gonna have to pull out some sweet moves. By sweet, I mean just hide. Just scuttle himself right out of there. Next, next, next. That hero is so fun to play, actually. Yes and no. Remember, yes and remember the... that conversation about <laughs> missing that first stun? Okay, yeah. If you're having Tilting one those, from there. If you're having one of those types of games, it can be a struggle. But every once in a while, you just have the perfect Nyx game where everyone's got like an AoE spell. Your care base is basically a Ravage in that game. OP's not letting James have any of it. <laughs> he just tried to get one shot off on the tower with the poison. OP just denied him even that with a laser. Ever since they changed the way that misses work, laser became, like, way better. Oh, yeah. Because before, if the attack was in the air, it wouldn't miss. But now it does. 
it, the, like the laser applies to you during the projectile animation or whatever. Same thing for stuff like Windrun. So now that they've taken that uh, top lane, looks like they're to rotate. They're short of tri lane. I don't think they can leave Luna by herself. But uh, they can rotate down to bottom lane, put some pressure there. Either Burning's not really going to be able to get as much farm, or if he leaves, they're going to be able to take that tower. Well, Luna has Eclipse, so if, if they rotate down like one or two stuns, they could probably just kill them. Yeah. Eclipse is really strong at this stage in the game, especially since Nando's going to hit seven before the supports are even in the area and try to get that kill. Lumic with his uh, Tranquil Boots kind of setting up for a uh, wraparound here on XXS. They do... Okay, not quite on the same page there. I think he could have wrapped there with the between the double slows. I think potato. they're just scared to die of the tier two. Yeah. Probably should be. Oh, he's walking over. No one expected this. XXS right, tries is... to get in range of the Echo Slam, but uh, it doesn't actually happen. They were hoping to be able to burst the Unli Knight down. Yeah. I don't think I don't think they even expected the kill per se. I think they just want Boba Cut. Yeah. Oh! Spike Care Face stun, turns around, stuns up Obika, and does manage to get out of the cold feet. So, well played by James. Burning is not going to be there in time to stop him. So, got an okay amount of damage on this tower while the Tinker was away. Meanwhile, Execration keep on going with their Shadow Demon Luna combination. Now, with the disruption and the higher level. Higher level is it's actually level 3 now. Dude, Raging Potato just gives zero shits. He's just running into like the tower, just. Hitting XXS over and over again. That's the beauty of Omni Knight, right? He needs to be careful though. If he gets oh. XXS, he wants to echo him so Just 100 bad. HP. But if Raging Potato gets close again, he'll throw out the combo and he'll actually take down that Omni Knight. So he's got a backup for now. He has another Mango coming up. He doesn't have. Uh, he didn't actually go the route of the Soul Ring. I'm yeah. kind of surprised. Early drums. I think that's a little bit more five-man conscious, right? Yeah, it is for sure. It gives you some mana regen, too. It's not like... It, if you have a stick and a, a drum, I think it's probably fine. Yeah. If you're, you're going to be fighting a lot, you know, get your mana through that. XSS is sitting at 500 gold, so it'll little, be a little while before he gets his Blink Dagger, thanks to all the pressure of the aggro channeling put out from Execration. Bulbaka just kind of scouting the Omni Knight, the surrounding area, seeing that there are any other heroes. Picks up his Arcane Boots now, but doubt he's really going to be able to do much here by himself. OP does have his Boots of Travel now, and Blink Dagger on its way quite soon if Execration don't do something to start stopping him. That's going to be the point in the game. Here comes the combo, beating it with the sun. XSS has the Echo Slam. It Raging Potato. He actually he canceled his enchant attack. I don't know if he wanted to give Bobaka the kill or what, but would have been nice, I think, to secure the extra gold just to get closer to that blink. But it kills a kill. For sure. They're still protecting this uh, offlane tower pretty well. Nando is going to get out of the cold feet. Actually gets locked in, but he's close enough to be able to finish off the ancient apparition. But now he's stuck underneath the tier 1 tower against a big bad bear in his face. Flying that poor little deep sea monster to death. I was going to say Panther, but I forgot she changed mounts. Yes. James is going to be able to take his mid tower, though. Definitely forcing some kind of reaction into a tower. That's, that, that's what you want to do, I think, as Execration right now, if you're not just going to do the full five-man thing yet. It is going to get harder and harder to play that five-man style the more farm that OP gets. But I think that in this game, if you try to split farm, it's gonna get real rough for you. Like there's a yeah. Nyx, a Vendetta into an AA Blast is very easily a kill on a lot of these heroes. Like the Shadow Demon, uh, the Sand King could just die to that. Mask of Madness for Nando. Do get a scan on the Lone Druid who's farming, but I think Nando thinks it's a little something else. Maybe yeah. the Nyx Assassin or something. Now, Burning's just been like chilling on the side of the map for most of the game. He doesn't really want to interfere with OP farming the jungle or you know XXS going for his blink dagger. He realizes that his hero is it's in the sacrificial role, but at the same time it's also something that can do enough on its own to apply some kind of pressure. Not a lot of core heroes can really do what what Lone Druid does. Yeah, that's why you say Liquid pick it up so much. It's slowing down the tar pushes as well, right? Yeah, still 
have yet to take that final remaining tier one tower. OP, just a thousand gold away from his blink dagger. It's uh, kind of an interesting choice here by Bulbica, the Yule Scepter. Um, as a first item. It is a little bit, a little bit weird. Don't see that very often. That's one way to make sure you don't miss stuns. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great way. But I think this is one of those types of games where there's so much AoE that you probably can just carapace in this stun. I mean, granted, right now he's only level 7. Yeah. So the level 1 carapace doesn't guarantee an impale, but... I think it's also nice to, like, he can throw the Omni in, you know, clutch situations out of the fight with the Yule Scepter and maybe get a combo on him. He can uh, also defensively use it a lot if he goes in. He can use it to protect himself against uh, Eclipse or maybe uh, Sand King about to run him down. Yeah. No, it definitely has its merit. It's just something that you don't see very often. Yeah, for sure. A lot of the time in a game like this, I think a lot of people would expect to just see something like a Midas. You have a Tinker on your team and an AA. Like, the game is probably going to stretch out, but at the same time, if Execration continue this push and they are able to get the objectives that they want, it could very easily turn into a bad Midas game. So maybe he just feels like, this item gives me regen. Gives me mobility. It definitely has some uses in fights. It's kind of like the jack of all trades choice, I suppose. I mean, I'm looking at this, and and I'm thinking the the kind of climax of this game is going to be around like 25, 30 minutes, where I think that first push comes in for execration. It'll set the tone for the game. Yeah. And if they take that lane of racks, or even just the tier three, then they can st establish control and and have a good chance at being able to close this game out. But if they fail in that push, then Tinkers and Lone Druid are just inevitably going to get big up to own the game. Bobaka actually missed the Courier. He's been searching for it for a while. He didn't quite have the Vendetta up when it passed him by going out to deliver items. And he wasn't able to catch it on the way back in either. He has been spending just so much time chilling out in the jungle. He's actually still only level 7. 15 minutes in despite having a pretty good start. It's kind of weird, right? Because usually the di dynamic of a hero like that is you don't want to show on the map all the time, but periodically you kind of need to push lanes. Yeah. But when you have a tanker and a lone druid who are just going to be in the lanes most of the time, or maybe even to a point they let OP be the one who just pushes all the lanes because they say, okay, well, no one has catch. You know, there's no blank on the Sand King yet. Uh, Lumic is kind of close, but doesn't quite have it. You don't need to show as much. You know, and, and that way you don't get any exp either because you're just running around i think he's completely reliant on these like base defense or tower defense fights to get him at levels and i guess a bounty rune here and there doesn't hurt either illusion rune that'll be quite fortuitous for nando who's been farming through some ancient stacks does have his mask madness as well as the dragon mask. So he's actually getting pretty tanky here uh, bulbica sets up a kill onto lumic with the help of op Meanwhile, you do get the Ancient Apparition here in mid lane. So it looks like the first reveal of James' Shadow Blade successfully gets a kill, even if it is just a support. And that will set in motion a push to the mid lane. No Ice Blast. They feel pretty comfortable being able to stand against this. XSS does have his Blink Dagger. They know about it too. That's why they're keeping pretty spread. He was uh, very boldly showing that in the bottom lane earlier. So they're just letting the Illusions do their work. And James is going to be the only other hero actually hitting onto the tower. James tries to go for a little bit of block off here. And Fisher puts him in an awkward position. Both is able to get the follow-up stun. Cold Feet proc there as well. But obviously there's no real go here from Invictus Gaming. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're even okay with losing this tier two eventually, as long as it buys some time for burning to uh, split push away. He's almost got Radiance. He's already got the Midas on the bear as well. So 200 gold, a little bit less, and he'll have everything that he needs. And they'll be able to just push the lanes that much harder. OP is gonna be on one side of the map. Burning's gonna be on the other. It's gonna begin the, the great split push. Are you glad split push is, uh bit back in both. I, I'm glad that it's something that you can do now. Yeah, same. Because when Shrines first came out and they were like just super obnoxious and people didn't know how to play around them, split pushing kind of felt dead because there was just more ways to get around the map faster and, and catch you off guard and there was more places you wanted to ward and like it, it felt really bad to split push. I'm just glad that you can do it now and it doesn't seem like unbeatable. It's, a, it's in a good place, I feel. I agree. I think the the fact that they kept the shrines, but the the way they they made split pushing more viable was pretty clever. 
you know, adding in this armor aura. For when you five man, yeah, around yeah. the towers and stuff. So five man pushing into towers is a lot harder, but a single hero or even sometimes even just illusions, so much more valuable when they hit onto some of those tier one tier twos. Dude, this stun on Illumic, they're gonna be able to catch the Sand King, but he actually gets the Burrow Strike away before the chain stun is there. XXS. Trying to go for the Enchant Totem instead of the Echo Slam, and now he's going to be caught. As a result, nice scare back there from Burning. Gives Nightwish just a little bit of room, but until Nando's here, he's got the Eclipse. Going to be able to run down 1-2 and maybe take the Bear as well. Keeps the damage on him, making sure it can't return to its master. An extra 300 gold for Looming. That was really nice. Oh, wait, did he actually catch? He did. Sentry into a Disruption. They're going to try and get the stun out from James. It's not quite there, but they do get the dust to slow down Bobka. So he's definitely dead. It's just a matter of how long it takes. There it is. Easy peasy. And, you know, that kind of movement where you go for this very aggressive smoke play, it's it's meant to catch them off guard and be like a, a warding mission slash gank. So they had the vision down between the tier 1 and the tier 2, and then they say, okay, maybe we get a bonus kill. So it's not... I guess a, a super bad thing that it failed for IG, but at the same time, this is going to be a Raging Potato Omni with, you know, drums pipe soon. And then you're going to have the, the max points into Repel. James is working his way towards BKB. We're getting to that 25-30 minute mark that you were talking about earlier, where it's it's going to be, can IG hold it off? Can they stop, like, this DK, Luna, Shadow Demon, Death Bowl from just taking a set of racks? Now, IG, they're not going to be all about the defense. Looks like uh, occasionally they'll poke their heads out, turtle style, see if they can get a kill on something. Four-man smoke up, heading to bottom lane. If they can catch Raging Potato, because they do still have the Echo Slam. Bobica leading the way, his smoke has popped, he does see Raging Potato, so they should be able to get this easy kill. And Ice Blast, no Echo Slam being used, but this time they do have the chain stun. So he holds on to that extra bit of kill mechanism with IG right behind the Tier 1 tower. It's a quick hop, skip, and a jump straight into the Tier 1 range. They can, looks like, bully that down without much issues. Execration not going to go for the contest here. Yeah, they just went for the same exact maneuver. They smoked and they walked through towards bottom, around, and caught a hero. It was really unfortunate pathing because Raging Potato had a sentry down, but he was on the low ground, so he couldn't see. Looming. Does get a stun on a Boba goes really deep in here. Throws out the dust just in case the banana goes down, but they actually do get the stun on Lumic here. Again, another situation where XXS is able to hold on to his Echo Slam, but still managed to get a kill. James is here, though. He does have a Shadow Blade. Gets lasered up, though, and scared away. The Cold Feet unable to latch, but Omni Knights here might still be able to grab some of these heroes. XXS does have the Blink Dagger ready to go. He gives over the Repel onto Nanto. James has been hit by the Ice Blast. Any bit of burst damage can actually finish him off. They do manage to get the two-man stun. Here comes XXS. He sees oh. this opportunity to blow up the Dragonite perfectly. Doesn't manage to save the Ancient Apparition, but on the right-hand side, Nando is coming forward with his Repel. Has now been repelled himself by OP and Burning. Takes him down, and this is where it all falls apart. Finally, the Echo Slam makes its debut. It's on the Rage. Potato and Invictus Gaming win a very offensive team fight. We'll take another objective, and this is the part where we start saying the objective of Execration's lineup just falls apart. Their strategy is falling apart. Invictus Gaming are going on the offensive much sooner than they should be. It should was be just able a, to. It wasn't like a one by one per se, but it really felt like that. The heroes of Execration. First off, R Raging Potato dies. Then the Sand King is chasing around Bobaka, so Lumic gets picked off as well. And then, like, the Luna Nando is running well past where his Tier 2 is and trying to chase away a couple of heroes. He ends up getting picked off by OP. There wa that wasn't a team fight, you know what I mean? That was just, like, each hero of Execration was out of position and just died over and over again until it just became insurmountable. And, yeah, you want to defend your towers, but not like that. You have to be there as a squad. You have to make use of the Omni Knight. There was no GA used. It felt like kind of a waste at that point because they'd already lost so many heroes. They didn't have Eclipse because they used it earlier. It'll be up now, but that was a pretty heavy blow. They just got dealt. They will find the bubble though. Looks like. That'll certainly help. Two man, Q and XXS don't really have the kill combo on Rage of Potato without Echo Slam, I think, so they're just going to have to run away. And this is uh, push time. Execration, I believe. We'll try and take that tier two tower. And Invictus Gaming, well, maybe not. They go for Roshan instead. I feel like that objective is a little bit easier to take, perhaps. So 
a 23 minute Aegis for Execration, it looks like, as Invictus Gaming are unlikely to contest. I don't know, they have the Spirit Bear in the area. OP could like TP and do some serious damage here. Yeah, maybe they can actually. They don't have the Echo Slam. That's one of the hard parts, but the Ice Blast. They can get a lot of damage done. They do manage to get the Repel onto James. He pops out though with a Shadow Blade. He can actually catch OP here. Does manage oh, to get the stun down with the Echo Slam as well as the Eclipse. They might be able to run down a lot of these heroes. They do manage to finish up the Tinker with the Eclipse taking out the Ancient Apparition. And Bernie's taking a lot of damage as well. He doesn't have the Scare Back. XXS, he comes in, tries to get Burning a little room to maneuver, but doesn't manage to get any kills. So Burning will still be run down. Execration have just turned this game Big time! OP even buys back for that, and they don't get a single kill in Victus Gaming. They just stumbled into perhaps their own undoing, trying to contest that Roshan. I don't, I don't understand. How did OP die? I uh, just got caught by the Dragonite. Because they, I guess they walked down without a sentry. That must be it, because the sentry down right now is from Execration. He just ended up getting caught at the beginning of the fight. That If that happens, you know, normally you're thinking at least a few sets of rockets come out, maybe a march or two and a laser, and yeah. that's kind of how they win the fight around Roche. Without that, the AA the a blast only hit on one person. So it doesn't... I think those types of fights where the, the Tinker dies first are the things that shouldn't really happen given Execration's heroes, because again, we talk about the vision and the lack of, of ways to get the Tinker OP getting caught like that, I think definitely loses them the fight. And now that Raging Potato has his full pipe finish, they get the Roshan obviously on top of this. It's a, a very huge swing, because there was about a 4 or 5k net worth lead for Invictus Gaming before that fight happened. Execration or even up. Look at that. It's almost a 6k experience lead Yeah, for IG. That was actually goes up to 4k for Execration. That fight needed to happen for Execration to stay in the game. We're getting to a very scary part now for IG because Execration have, have, have not actually been forcing this as fast as maybe you would have seen lineups in the past. Uh, I think part of it is just in general we want to scale a bit more with our heroes before we go for those objectives. High ground still tough to push into, a pet, especially in this situation. But I think teams have gotten better about reading what their absolute peak is with a lineup and Luna being able to get, like, say, a Scotty and them having BKB plus Blink on Dragonite. Him being able to jump to that back line and really threaten the hero, even if it's not the Tinker. Maybe it's just the Ancient Apparition or something. Like, that really is what gives them their high ground potential. And now with the BKB on James, in conjunction with everything else... Kill the bear! Slay the beast! That soul catcher just makes the bear turn into dust. <laughs> Super squishy. This is a really nice move coming in from Execration. Getting the quick kill on the bear, recognizing, hey, there's a tier two. We don't really want to push into mid. If they can crack the tier three, Luna becomes completely insane. Because Here you just get the glaives bouncing everywhere. First high ground push. Kind of awkward. James actually goes for the Shadow Blade, goes for the back line, managed to catch a Q with this epicenter coming in. It's going to be huge. The Yule Scepter save on the Nyx's ass will buy him a little bit of time, but it looks like he's still going to be picked apart by James. Now the slow into burning. No. Oh my god, the execration! They're just tearing IG apart. He's got a buyback, but it's already tier three gone. Is it even worth it to buy back at this point? Might not have a choice. Execration, the way they're looking at this, they can finish up this mid lane there of There might Rax. be two sets. Yeah, they can go for a second set easily here. The Dragonite ultimate still only halfway through. They also have Eclipse as well as that Aegis. But the Spirit Bear is down for 40 seconds, so there's no point in buying, buying back for burning. This is like an unbelievable, like just flip the switch, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they get the Roshan fight, they get a smoke into a killing a bear, and it, IG just didn't seem prepared for the push. The Tinker wasn't there, there was no march down, they get the free blink inside of the base, the epicenter, the stun on two heroes. Like everything that Execration needed to accomplish happened in like the span of five minutes. Yep. That, that does not happen very often against these types of lineups, especially against an experienced team like IG. So if I sound like I'm kind of at a loss, it's because you don't really expect that to happen. Like, you don't expect that Roshan fight where OP gets caught because they don't have any vision. And he buys back during that as yeah, well. Yeah, like, that was an incredible series of events for Execration to just consistently, like, boom, 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 knock down all these objectives. If that he doesn't buy back there, he would have Aghanim Scepter for that fight. Yeah. And everything changes with Aetherlands Aghanim Scepter, right? Because you get a laser off, even if it's just hitting a creep, it'll bounce over to hit these heroes. It slows down the push so dramatically. But Execration, 
It wasn't there. They were able to push in. They made that Shadow Blade play from the Dragon Knight, where he gets out of the Tier 3 range on the left-hand side and just runs straight at Q. That's crazy. Execration are, are playing a very impressive game of Dota here. And uh, a Butterfly coming in. He actually changed it from Scotty. Straight up for the Butterfly. This Tier 2 will unlock the Tier 3 at top lane, and the final push for Execration could happen. One Aegis, it's still there. They've managed to take bottom and mid laner racks and potentially take full Megas with just one Aegis type. That is a fast line. Look at these Envious Heroes coming in for the side. They caught Q once again. There's that Blink Dagger BKB threatening the defense of IG. The Yule Scepter getting used once again, but that will not save you. Maybe the Invis will or not. RR is going to be right there to be able to slow him down. OP comes forward. Managed to get the bouncing laser, but he gets turned around almost immediately. Stunned up. I wish uh, XXS throws down James as best he can, but it only allows to save OP, not actually kill any heroes. He's just getting more and more damage on James, but Mega Creeps are up. IG may still be alive, but Mega Creeps at 29 minutes. That has got to be an indefensible position. Maybe they can actually kill James here and get some extra heroes. Oh, I guess it's not Megas yet. They still have the range creeps in the mid lane. Execration. Nando's actually going to go for it. He's taking around a little too far, perhaps, though. Bouncing the there, killing the illusions, also hitting the backline hero, but they really need to catch up to the actual Luna. The problem is, she's so damn fast. Not going to be able to catch him. So IG just left hanging on a thread with one range Rax. Has no healing capacity whatsoever. So just 775 chip damage is all that leads to Execration's victory. They can just walk down the lane and Illusion spam it, I think. Yeah. They don't really even have to commit the hero. They can if they want, because they have Raging Potato. You know, he's got the four staff now in conjunction with the drums and the pipe that he picked up earlier. The Omni is actually coming really big. I know that a lot of the teams, like Execration and... Uh, old MVP and stuff like that, and who is the other team that I, I can't remember the name of, it was another team from the Southeast Asian region, but they all loved playing Omni. Like that, he was seen so much, like in the Boston qualifiers, for example, there was definitely a lot of that hero, and they're, they're very comfortable on him, so it's kind of cool to see him in competitive play, not something that we get to see a whole lot of, but it fits what the lineup wants to do, right? You, you need a hero who can walk up to the tower against Tinker and just hit it, yeah. and that's what Repel allows you to do, not for maybe as much time as you used to, but you know, seven seconds is still quite a long time being Magic Immune. Yeah, a collective 18 seconds of Magic Immunity between the Dragonite and Luna for them to be able to take down this one range tracks. I I actually have to do something crazy aggressive right now to stop this, right? Because it doesn't matter if you win that fight against Megas this early on to the game. It doesn't matter if you win that team fight, but I have to go against Megas for the next 45 minutes or some crazy idea of how you actually win this game. You will lose out. So uh, IG, they have to somehow start the fight outside of their base. It's all up to XXS here to find the right kind of initiation. IG starts setting up March the Machines. Well, because it's going to go for his scouting. But Nando has his Illusion army ready to go. The Disruption Illusion is going to lead the way. He has his Manta ready to go as well. Oh, Bobica got spotted for a second there. But he's fast enough to run away until Lumic managed to blink forward with that gem. Catch them with a Burrow Strike. On the right-hand side, Nando's actually going to meet the rest of IG. And look oh at that bouncing God. Glaive damage. It's insane. The BKB is just ripping them apart with the Glaives. They can't turn. They can't stop him. They can't laser and force the miss. And James will be the one who blinks for pops his own BKB, and starts going for that range racks all by himself. They have the Glyph. They're going to be able to save some time for that range racks, but Nando is back in business. Now with Disruption Illusions, they can finish off that range racks. It's a couple more shots. They're actually dealing with the bear right now, and the Bouncing Glaze will deal with Q. So IG can go ahead and call it Execration. I mean, I looked at this, and for me, I was saying, I think IG 2-0 this, like 80% chance. But this lineup, it gave them such a huge peak and such a lineup that fits Execration so well that it seemed like they may have drafted themselves. Helps with IG making a few mistakes, but they drafted themselves an opportunity for a big win here. I really was impressed with how they played the game. It's one thing to say that a team like IG made it a handful of mistakes, which sure they did, but everyone makes mistakes in a game. No yep. one plays a perfect Dota game. It just doesn't happen. But to be able to abuse the mistakes 
as effectively and as quickly as Execration did. What was, what was, what, and what's impressive, they just dive into the base, they catch two heroes out straight away bottom lane after they take that successful Roshan engagement and just completely take it to IG. Like that level of aggression and just how quick they were able to move across the map, they were completely unprepared for. So game number two, it's going to be back to the drawing board for IG. All right, game number two coming up. Short break and we'll be back.